Hey all, Tom Rand here from Tom's Big Spiders. This episode, we're going to be rehousing another Zanessa species. And just full disclosure, I purchased a lot of Zanessa species a few years back, and just about all of them need to be rehoused into adult enclosures. That's why I'm doing so many of them. But this time around, we're going to be doing Zanessa species Amanis, or the Colombian Lesser Black. This large terrestrial from Colombia and Venezuela can reach eight plus inches, so that's a big, hefty spider. Slings are quite large. Juveniles are big, large, and gangly. It's a fast-growing species, but quite skittish. And I found the majority of my Zanesta species, if they're caught out in the open and startled, will kick. So that's something to be aware of. And for folks out there that aren't aware, urticating hairs are little bristles that the spiders can kick from their backsides and ways of the fence when they are startled or scared. And although a lot of folks will talk about spiders biting and that being the big threat, you should never overlook the fact that urticating hairs can be quite irritating. Now, the good thing with these guys is I get a little mild itch off of that's about it. And if you're careful during rehousings or cleaning, put on gloves and long sleeves shouldn't be an issue. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at Zanestis Amanis or the Colombian Lesser Black. All right, so we're about to rehouse my Zanestis Amanis. If everybody remembers, this was actually the first Zanestis species I ever got. Billy bought it for me way back during the pandemic when I was in the process of losing my mind for being home and teaching from home the entire time. At that time, I think it was April 2020. So it was about an inch and a half sling. It was a pretty good size gangly sling or so. And at that point, I had it in a, an enclosure that I don't normally use. It's like a four by four by three and a half inch tall acrylic cube. It's like made for displaying, I don't know, matchbox cars or something. Not matchbox cars, too big for that. But I will flash a picture of the rehousing up so just so people can see what I use. But that's not what I would use for these guys. Again, I quickly realized that they outgrow their enclosures, especially the slings, very, very quickly. All the Zanessa species I have go from about sling size to five inches within a year or so. So massive size during that first year. So what I was putting slings in after that was one of the M design. I think it was like kitchen and bathroom containers. I just looked them up on Amazon for my orders and it doesn't seem that they sell them anymore, but they go by from about six inches by four and three quarters inches by five inches high. And what I liked about them is they gave the sling a little more space and they're a little deeper because I've noticed that the majority of my Zanesta species did appreciate some substrate for burrowing in. The thing that is now is actually a Snapware airtight plastic food storage container, which once again, a lot of times I'll find something on Amazon that I want to use and try out. I bought one of these. I tried it out, went, oh, I really like these for juveniles. And then they never had them in stock again. So this is the one and only. I will probably put it out of circulation after this rehousing because I can't stand having enclosures that don't match up. I like buying, if I find something I like, I buy a lot of them. So they all stack up real nice, look great on the shelf. But I went to buy more of them, couldn't find more of them. But this was pretty good. Usually what I've been putting them in is the M Design containers, the ones that are about 13 inches by seven and a half by seven and a half or so. And uh, anybody that's watched my video knows I love using those. I have a whole row of them. And that works great for the juveniles. Now this one here, I planned on rehousing. We had a new home set up for it and then it went into pre-molt. So I wanted to wait till after it molted and ate a couple times. So this is after it molted. It's probably pushing about five and a half, six inches or so. So pretty good size. So what we're gonna do now is get that one from point A to point B and then we'll talk about what point B is. Hopefully it stays out in the open. Whoa, that's a new one. There we go. My voice goes from like 100 to 2 in decibels. Housing's get very calm. And I did in the original setup, obviously, we had the cork bark. It was hiding underneath the cork bark for quite some time. But then with the last bolt, it was a little big for the enclosure. And I waited. I was trying to find something that I was going to put these guys in as young adults. I finally found something I was going to use. And by that time, it had already gone into pre-mold. So we're going to do it just carefully. Oh, my Lord. There's that booty up in the air. I love when they do that. Showing off a little red booty, but gorgeous, gorgeous spiders. And again, I apologize. I've been doing a lot of Zanestis rehousing. I just did a Zanestis rehousing. The thing is, a lot of them, when I bought them, were about the same size. So most of them are needing rehousings into their sub-adult or adult enclosures now. So there's going to be a lot of them coming up. Plus, they're expensive spiders, and I have a lot of people ask me about their care. So I try to really keep people updated on it because I think it makes them feel a little more secure if they buy something that they know they can watch three or four videos that show me raising it up from sling all the way to adulthood. So let's get this one into its new home. I'm going to do this way. No, we want you to go backwards backwards. 
backwards, backwards, backwards. All right, so there it is, still butt in the air, still ready to throw hairs. And if everybody notices, I am wearing gloves because the hairs on these guys can be a little bit nasty at feeding time. They tend to like to kick a little bit of hair. And when they do, I come back, my wrists are itching, my hands are itching a little bit. It's not a terrible thing. It goes away within a day. So I want people scared off with it. But if you wear gloves, you'll be perfectly fine. So I just want to make, take that precaution. And I have noticed that when I put them in larger enclosures, it's not a big deal. I haven't had any issues. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're keeping them in something small, like I just had this other one in, yes, you're going to have more of an issue with hairs, I think. If you're something large like this where they have places to go to, it shouldn't be much of an issue. Now, the actual enclosure that it is in now is my favorite uh, barbarous growth explosion proof enclosures. This has been a running joke, so I'll keep this one short. I think people that have been watching the videos know, but I get these off of Amazon. This is the 10 gallon size. It's actually sold under reptile growth, but the box says barbarous growth. And honestly, I think barbarous growth is a superior name. And this should give it plenty of room to grow if it ends up being the eight inch spider that I'm hoping it'll end up being. What we have in here is BioDude substrate, which I like. I've used a lot of it, but you can easily use you know, a mixture of topsoil, cocoa fiber, peat, any of those put together. F have fun with the substrates. I am actually about to mix my first batch this year. I haven't done a lot of mixing of substrate lately, and I enjoy mixing them up and creating the properties I need for the spiders that I'm going to be housing. Then we have two pieces of cork bark. As I've been telling people, I've been trying to put, uh, give them an alternative as far as where they're going to finally settle down. So I've noticed that when you give them a couple choices, it helps them settle down a little more quickly because unfortunately, usually what we do, we put in one piece and hope the spider goes in there. Sometimes the spider doesn't really warm up to it very quickly. So this way, they have two different places to go. We have some sphagnum moss. This side here is the Galapagos brand. This side over here is a different brand. What brand is it? Now, credit, I put the thing away. It's one of the ones I bought off Amazon. I don't like it as much as the Galapagos, so I'll go back to the Galapagos. And then I have leaf litter. I was going to put a plant in here, but we just rehoused one, and it immediately destroyed the plant. I mean, the plant is... Let's see, I'm just going to peek over here on Billy Records. There is now one leaf left on the plant, which bothers me because I've had this plant now for about a year, so it killed my plant, and I'm really kind of angry about it. I'm just kidding. So we're not going to do plants anymore, I don't think, with this nested species. I've also had two other folks chime in and say that they tried the plants with their nested species, and the same thing happened. They just completely ripped them up. You able to see it? Yep. Now, feeding-wise, these guys eat like machines. The slings I mentioned before... Mine would barrel roll, they'll run, grab a little cricket or roach, barrel roll onto their backs, hold onto it a minute before writing themselves. It's been a lot of fun to watch them hunt. They have those big, long, gangly legs, so they can really move a sling. So something to keep in mind. Uh, large slings and juveniles will eat large crickets or large B. lateralis roaches with no problem. They'll also eat like medium dubia. And then the adults, this one, I'll drop three or four large crickets in with. Usually with my larger species specimens now, I've been feeding them about every two weeks to once a month. If I give them a bigger meal, it's once a month. I've been actually easing back a lot on my feeding just because I've been noticing a lot of my spiders get very fat very quickly and then they go into pre molt for a while. So we've been kind of stretching it out a bit. And temperatures, I've heard that these guys need to be kept, kept super warm. I, that has not been my experience. The, this one, when I got it, was at the old house in which during the winter time, it was like low 70s, sometimes it would hit high 60s. And then in the summertime, it was mid to high 70s, occasionally 80 degrees. It grew just fine. Then we came to the new house temperatures here now. During the winter, I keep the thermostat set at 73. So depending on the shelf, it's anywhere from 72 to 75. And then sometimes during the winter, the power of the heat fails to keep up with the temperature outside and it'll drop a little bit. So we've had temperatures in here for a day that are like in the 60s. One time it even hit 58 or so. Everybody's been perfectly fine. Would I keep them like that every single day? No, absolutely not. But they do tolerate the slight drop in temperature for a little while. And as far as moisture, I do keep the lower levels moist. The lower levels of this are moist. I have kept the lower levels moist. And there's I always give them a moist spot. If I see one hanging around a water dish and this one just to mention, I will be putting a water dish in here. Uh, that tells me that they want a little more moisture. So I will probably keep the bottom level moist on one side. I will keep the other side dry. And that will also give it an alternative to where it wants to go. If it needs things a little more moist, you can go to the moist side. If it needs things a little drier, it can go to the dry side. But I have noticed for all my Zanesta species, I know some of them come from areas that are a little more arid, get a little less rainfall. But I've noticed they all seem to appreciate a bit of moisture. Now I'm going to put the top on this one. One more thing with the top on this. 
This is not the screen that supposedly their feet can get stuck in. This is actually, I think it's called perf. They said it's perforated aluminum or something. I have heard folks say that they've had issues with the tarantula claws getting caught in here. Uh, this has just popped up recently. Somebody had a problem with one and somebody alerted me to it. So heads up, I haven't seen it yet, but I can tell you that when you open this thing up, it wouldn't be very difficult at all because of this big lip here to cut a piece of plexiglass or a piece of, even what I like to buy is the sheets that you put over a poster for a poster frame. They're much thinner. You can cut them with scissors. You could easily cut a piece out to go in here, drill some holes in if you want some more of that top circulation, even though we have quite a bit on the sides, and then just use some silicone to glue it right in here, which would protect the spider. So very easy alteration. I'll be doing that in a future one just to show people, just in case this does become an issue. So that will do it. Zenestis species, Amanis, Colombian, lesser black, awesome spiders. Hopefully this will be a good home for this one. Give it some room to grow up. Very excited to see it when it gets larger because they are just big, beautiful spiders. So again, I'll continue to keep folks updated on this. I know for folks who have no interest in keeping Zenestis species, they probably get sick of this content. However, for me, it comes down to, I know a lot of folks are out there looking at them. Some people are actually picking them up. They are quite expensive. So people want to know that they're doing the right thing for their spiders and taking care of them correctly. So if I can show what I'm doing every step along the way, I figure for those folks, that'll be a nice little way to double check their own care and make sure that their spider is going to make it from sling to adult. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. Click a little circle up in there. I will put the original rehousing video down in here that featured this one when I first got it. It's kind of a trip. It was done during the pandemic and we're a little bit loopy and I'll put something else up here. If you take the time to comment, I'll take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days because I tend to get a lot of comments and I tend to get busy. That'll do it for this one, guys. As always, stay safe. We'll catch you next time.